you spend any time researching the Hawk 250, you know that it's a good beginner bike, but you're definitely gonna wanna mod it right out the box. So today, I decided we should talk about the top three most important modifications that I think you should do to your Hawk 250 when you get it. All these mods you can do by yourself they are available on Amazon just like the bike and I got links to all of them in the description and more. Now, number three is gonna be an aftermarket exhaust. The reason why I say you should get an aftermarket exhaust is because the one that it comes with it has a cat in it and it's super, super restricted with the airflow. If you put just an exhaust on this bike and nothing else, you will see huge performance gains it sounds way better you can get different type of aftermarket pipes it uh almost lines up exactly with the honda crf 150 i believe but if you look online you can find all the different pipes that uh fit it i have one in my description right now it's the jfg racing exhaust it's the one you guys can hear in all my videos and all the pure sound videos if you like the way that sounds it is not that expensive. You just need to buy a gasket for it and then you're ready to go. Really opens up the airflow. It pairs really well with the airbox modification. And the airbox modification is literally just making like two little cuts inside the airbox. I'll make a video on that in the future though. <laughs> All right, number two is gonna be getting yourself an aftermarket carburetor. Personally, I would suggest the Nibby 28 millimeter flanged version. This one fits directly up into the intake manifold and the engine itself. So you don't need to buy an extra like adapter or anything like that. And it comes with extra jets in it. You might have to buy another set of jets if the ones that come with it don't actually fit your needs but luckily for me the ones that came with it fit perfectly and the jets are only like 10 bucks so it's not a big deal at all and that paired with the exhaust is going to give you the biggest performance gains once i did both those things i accidentally popped the wheelie in second gear it was actually terrifying because i was it's still in my like second or third week of riding You definitely want to get yourself an aftermarket carburetor. I personally like that Nibby 28 millimeter. A lot of people go with the Nibby 30 millimeter or the uh, Makumi clones. I believe that's what they're called. But if you want the one that I use, it's of course in my description, just like everything else. And if you want some other ones, just Google Hawk 250 aftermarket carburetor or YouTube it and you will find tons. Some are easier to jet than others, but pretty much you can make them all work if they're somewhere around 26 to 30 millimeters. number one most important thing you guys have heard me talk about it a million times and it's the thing that makes this bike the most streetable everything else is basically for more power but this is what makes it really shine on the street maybe not shine let's just say uh more comfortable to ride on the street and it's upgrading your sprockets so by stock the front is a 17 the back is a 50 this is very torquey and you only get like, let's say, 10 miles an hour out of first gear, and then another like five miles an hour out of second gear. It's absolutely terrible on the street. You'll be shifting all the way up to fifth just to go 30. So what I did, and what a lot of other people do, is get a 15 for the front and a 45 for the back. What this does is bring first gear all the way up to 20 miles an hour. It stretches out all the gears. You can find a different gear ratio that works for you. If you want a little bit more torque or a little bit more top ends, there's of course a limit. You can't just keep bringing up the gear ratio and 
get more top end that you, you top out at some point and right now I think I'm at a really good balance where I get up to 70 miles an hour 65 on regular like flat with wind hitting me and I've got the 17 in the front and a 45 in the back highly highly recommended I can't say enough about that oh a bug just hit my windshield or my my face visor and it is very bloody and gushy sorry I had to bring that up so you guys could experience it with me so I'm not alone in this oh my god now for the honorable mention is the tires on these tires or on this bike I've got the Shinko 705 tires which are like an 80-20 dual sport tire 80% street 20% uh, off-road and they are so nice if you want to take a lot of the vibration out of the bike and feel a little bit more comfortable in turns highly recommend doing that I personally didn't do this by myself I brought it to a shop to put the tires on that's the only thing I had a shop do because I wasn't really comfortable with it so I didn't really include that in the list although it is a very strong honorable mention because the knobby tires that come with the bike are really not that great in overall quality when you're on the street they feel squirrely at best and my least favorite part about them was how they gripped random creases in the street like if there was a, a divot in the corner or a little part of the road that had kind of like a valley it would get sucked into it I never went this way let's try it I've been doing a lot more exploring lately. I'm just going on streets that I haven't been to before. Oh, that looks like a nice off-road trail over there. I wonder if that's like public access. I gotta do some Googling. Join some Facebook groups around here and see if there's people who do like some trails. It'd be fun to take this thing off-road every now and then. Damn, that guy's got a full-size basketball court in his backyard. How he disciplines his son instead of like giving him a timeout he's just like let's go in the back i'm putting 21 on your head right now check it up son Where the hell am I? Every time I explore around in this part of Mass, I feel like I'm going into a completely different world. Sometimes I forget just how much stuff there is around me. I know that sounds crazy, but... Oh, I know where I am now. It's the fire station that I've been by a bunch of times. Well, I want to go see what's down that road over there. Let's go to the left, actually. There's usually never any traffic around here. Oh, of course. Oh, what are they doing over there?
I saw there's a guy who's putting together a like guide on how to easily supermoto this bike. And I asked him how much the prices was. And he said that it's well under a thousand dollars. So hopefully when he puts that list together in his video or article or whatever he's gonna do, I might do that to my bike if it's worth it. We'll see. Cause I just want something that I can really like dive into corners a little bit better. And the, the wheel setup 21 inch in the front, 18 in the back is not really made for that. But if you threw like some Ninja 250 wheels on, I believe they're 16 and a half inches in the front, 16 and a half in the back. Some Pirelli's on there. Some Rossies. Be hitting the leans. Be scraping peg in no time. I can't be the only one that accidentally slams it into neutral going from first to second, right? I feel like this never happened before and now it's happening more and more to me as I get more comfortable or lackadaisical in my shifting. That's the word of the day right there, lackadaisical. See, that was way too early of an apex there. Should have turned in later. Gotta remember, you never wanna be leaning over too close to the yellow line on the street. Obviously on a racetrack, you wanna hit your apexes as tight as possible, but on a street, that's probably not the best way to do it. people look at me like extended I always give them a few wraps because I don't know if they're looking at me positively or negatively and I know if they're looking at me positively then they'll appreciate the wraps and if they're looking at me negatively then fuck them take these wraps y'all that's gonna be it for me i hope you guys have been enjoying the moto vlogs i've been absolutely loving them don't forget in the description we got the amazon links to everything that i talked about today and more and also if you want to support me you can click one of those links and buy something else i'll get like a one percentage of whatever you buy on amazon through those links and i've got my patreon below so if you guys want to help me get a nicer newer fancier bike for the channel any of the funds that i get from this channel are going directly into a new bike that's all my youtube ad revenue any of the amazon affiliate link stuff anything i make from this including the patreon is all going to a new bike so hopefully we get to the point where i can buy a nice bike enjoy it for a few seasons maybe a season or two you know sell it get a new bike and we can keep the content flowing like that you guys know from the streams that i'm the type of guy that doesn't like doing the same thing over and over again for too long so 
At one point, I'd like to have a lot of bikes, but right now we are just gonna focus on one step at a time. So if you wanna support me, you know where to look. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate y'all.